killed the woman that resembled his mother in like his mind. That was that was a turning point in the show for me to think, okay, this isn't such a kid friendly show after all. Press a senpai, pull up to the place like a samurai. Young OG Rochi fully gang kai. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Iceberg Slim, aka Coach the Don. And today I am doing a season two review for Maggie. And if you saw my season one review, you saw I was I was I was looking forward to this season. Um This is a very particular this is a very unique style of anime. It's very um in no way is it simplistic, in no way is it derivative or repetitive. This is its own show in its own void. Uh, I think the only similarities I would put with it in other shows would be, I guess, the use of elemental power such as fire, water, you know, stuff like that, wind, but you can't really get away with that. You can't really get away from that in anime for the majority of the time because uh, it's always entertaining, so I was fine with that. But yeah, this anime is its own thing. So, going into season two, let's talk about the good things first. One thing I really enjoyed this season was really more focused on the in-depthness of each character, even the new ones, like the black-haired prince of the co-empire with the wooden arm that just became a, a dungeon capturer. Uh, season one, he was pretty passive. He was pretty um, reserved, not much of a warrior, had a little bit of fighting experience, but nothing to really just worry about on the battlefield. Um, this, this season, they went more in-depth in who he really is as a character. Um, his backstory and the journey he's on to kill his mother who basically destroyed their whole kingdom and killed his brothers and father um that was a great that was a great plot twist I didn't see that coming that was good I like that um I think that that was like the third or fourth episode and that's when I saw the writing start to elevate a little bit and even the show got a little bit more gruesome um when he killed the woman that resembled his mother in like his mind that was that was a turning point in the show for me to think okay this isn't such a kid friendly show after all like season one it was kind of um kind of friendly kind of a little soft they tackled some hard issues but they didn't go too in depth in all of them but this one they now they're getting more gruesome in their artistry i like that i was I'm a fan of that um on to the director of the Magic Academy or Magic Country, I forget the name of it. Um, we get to see him, who wasn't even the character in season one, but new character in season two, we get his whole life story from a child to teenager to father and adulthood, how he, how he loses his wife, his daughter, all the way to old age, what it means for him to be a magician living in the world of non magic users and the differences they share. And, um, at times, his uh, point of view can see a little, can seem a little um, prejudice. Very, actually, deeply prejudiced, deeply, deeply. But at the end of the show, he realizes he was wrong, and he makes a, a turning point in his life right before the ring of death, and realizes all humanity is worth saving. Um, so that, that was nice. And they also got a, a lot more in depth with the um, uses of Jenny Crip this season. Uh, we got to see the different characters, old and new, get their personal Jenny Quip, which basically allows the user to become significantly stronger uh, in battle. And uh, we got to see the design of each one and the functions of it. I, was, I enjoyed that a lot. A lot. Now, what I didn't enjoy so much, everything that I was looking for to be continued from season one to season two didn't happen. Uh, it wasn't nothing that I predicted to find in season two came to fruition, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because I feel like I feel like the majority purpose of season two, at least the middle, in a sense, was just to get the ball rolling and set things up. Um, so I do feel like season one was a little bit more more detailed in the writing but it had like 
some soft parts where the writing was kind of shaky, but it was detailed enough to make it pass through. Season two was more, the writing was better, but it was so broad sometimes. You don't really just fully know what all is going on. You just get the gist of it. So it's like, okay, okay. But like I said, they did a great job with um, setting things up. Like in the beginning, the, the prince with the wooden arm. His character development is a complete 180. Uh, from the moment uh, he killed his mom to the very last episode, him, him turning out to be evil is saw none of it coming that's good that's good writing i like that i like he actually started to become more of a um, top tier character for me towards the middle of the season i was really enjoying him um but i was sadly uh mistaken to think that i was gonna see more more gianna in season two and more of sinbad and even judal i didn't they didn't really just get their proper screen time but then again, I can't be too upset because I do feel like they just casted them aside to introduce these new characters, which were also strong. But like I said before, it was such a broad introduction. You don't really just know these characters that much like um, the prince, the majority of the world family of Ko. Um, we get the fact that they're strong, but we don't know their really story like that. We don't know their backstory too much. They just kind of introduced them. They just kind of introduced them and um, had them box a little bit, which is nice, but nothing just immense to know what these characters have been through. But I was really into the fact that they gave that entire kingdom a whole, uh, I want to say like either 17 or 21 members of um, the tribe Morgiana's from, a whole fighting force, and they showed out this season. They, we didn't... They were probably in like maybe f they were probably in like one episode before the final war, maybe two at the most. But when they got to the war, they they showed out and they showed how important it is to have characters like them on your side because it, it makes a huge difference. I was a little confused about the character development with Titus though in the the last half of the season because how he was introduced, he was like a snarky arrogant uh magician but like two episodes later after meeting aladdin he became something much bigger much more far more important to the show than i ever thought he would be and more of a caring kind-hearted soul i didn't see any of that coming but i did still enjoy it um like i was saying i was really disappointed to not see more Gianna or sinbad or judal in the show until the final two episodes but i do understand that they were just introducing new characters but I was ecstatic when I seen them show up in the last three episodes and they made a huge impact when they did come uh, the majority of this season they're not there but they made up for it with, with the last three episodes kinda I remember for season one I believe I gave Maggie a like a solid B for a grade um, after watching season two I would definitely give it a solid B plus cause even though the the most popular characters weren't in the show so much. Even Simba had had like maybe two, maybe three episodes at the most. And the big spectacular part at the end. Um, the scenes where they, where they do go more in depth than like Jenny Quip. And um, the writing for certain aspects of the season are definitely B, are definitely B plus tier writing. So even though it wasn't just in depth and detail about every single thing like season one was it was still a high quality even though broad just personally i feel like season one had so many different things going on at once from poverty to slavery to overthrowing the kingdom to becoming a democratic republic to we also about to go to war just stacked on each other but at the same time they gave us such a detail and backstory on why everything was happening it was so it was very easy to follow uh i just feel like the delivery sometimes in the writing was kind of shaky but they did give you enough information to follow along um 
Favorite characters in season two? I uh, would definitely say Aladdin is there. I love how they went in depth with him learning magic and like the magic system of the eight different types of magic and how everything just works. They, uh, they did a great job with that. Um, Sinbad, of course, showing us why he's the strongest man in the show. That's not a mic. I love that. Um, he put out, and we still haven't even seen every gen equip he has. We've just seen like, I think three, maybe three. Uh, that was great. Um, Aladdin is still not one of my favorite characters, but I will acknowledge that he is improving and I will acknowledge that he has earned more respect for the training he's done and the gen equip that he now owns. Even though he's still not a top tier character and a lot of other characters are better with their gen equip, you definitely can see the progress. So I cannot be mad at that. That's maybe season three he'll come around and be the guy everybody wants him to be. He but he is elevating, so that's always good. But yeah, like I was saying, uh, at the end of the season, uh, I guess definitely give it a B plus now in my mind. Uh, I'm looking forward to season three. Not sure when it's gonna come out because it's been a long time since season two. But hey, I'm hopeful. But until then, peace. We just been. Here. You know, I was just venting, man. You know.